Welcome to Brokenomics. I'm filming this one from home, and as you know, every time I do that, I boom with the tech, and hopefully I haven't done that too badly this time. But what I did want to get into was the whole uh, moon landing stuff, because I, I do find it a really interesting question. Now, as I've explained many times, um, I, I don't know what to think on this one, because I'm not a technical person, I'm not an aerospace engineer or anything, so I don't know. Um, and there are loads of technical arguments out there that you can go and find stuff about the, you know, the Van Allen radiation belt, this, that, and the other thing. But, but I mean, what do I know about the Van Allen radiation belt? What, what do any of you know about that? But what I do understand is people. And what I wanted to address was the questions about the people involved and the decisions that was made and the narrative that was put out and the chain of events and just see, okay, can we put together a coherent narrative that that applies for all of this? My actual position is that I don't know, and I'm perfectly comfortable not understanding or or not knowing um, one way or the other for sure. Um, But as an investor, my basis is always that I need to be got over the line on something. So um, I, I won't make an investment in something until I've crossed a certain line that this is a good investment. And I won't short it as well um, until I've got over the line that this is something that is that, that clearly needs to be shorted. So I'm perfectly happy being in that comfortable position. And to my mind at this time, uh, neither side of this debate, um, either that we definitely did go or we definitely didn't go, neither of those camps have got me over the line. So I just think it's an interesting discussion to have. I know some of my viewers hate me talking about this and say that I shouldn't do it. But, but it's but it's always fascinating when there's an interesting question that people don't want you to talk about. Those are always the things that I'm most attracted to. So um, I thought, well, who do I know that can make the case um, that perhaps there was something a little bit fishy going on. And I reached out to a um, man of recent Joe Rogan internet fame, um, host of a uh, website, bartsabrell.com. Bart Sabrell, thank you so much for coming on. Sure, it's, it's actually yes. sabrell.com, although bartsabrell.com oh, okay. gets you there. Just my last name. Sabrell, S is in Sam, I B is in boy, R E L dot com. You know, listening to you, Dan, of your uh, very generous introduction, um, one of the things that comes to mind is a quote from Shakespeare. And he said, Thou hmm. dost protest too much. And I'm a filmmaker, and there's a quote from a, a film. Um, and they said, The likelihood of one individual being right increases in direct proportion to the intensity to which. Others are trying to prove him wrong. And we should know for certain whether we went to the moon or not. And the fact that there's all this very reasonable doubt, to me, that itself is an indication that they didn't go. And so is all of this defense. If they really went to the moon, then why would they care if somebody said they didn't go, that would be like me going around saying Mickey Mouse was the first president of the United States, not George Washington. Do you really think there'd be a thousand YouTube videos to reassure people that George Washington was the president first and not Mickey Mouse? And so the fact that it has to be supported so yeah. much, so repeatedly, is proof that it's made out of straw out of me. And let me add, I used to not only believe the moon landings are real, I virtually worshiped them. I had a shrine of Apollo 11 pictures that followed me wherever I went, house to house. We just have to keep an open mind and realize that being suspicious of the United States federal government is reasonable because the former defense secretary during the Vietnam War said, look, the Pentagon uh, people, you need to know this, that the public is 90% against entering the war. On December 6, 1941, 90% of Americans were against entering World War II. The following day after Pearl Harbor, 90% wanted to get even. So Defense Secretary Robert McNamara, before he died, got something off his chest. He said, by the way, uh, I went to the Pentagon and the CIA and we had a meeting and they said we need some sort of Pearl Harbor type of event to get the public behind the Vietnam War. So they created, out of thin air, the Gulf of Tonkin incident, which was allegedly a North Vietnamese ship attacking an American ship. He said before he died, he and the CIA made it up, a complete fabrication never happened. Now, the 
Congress and the Senate, who allegedly represent us, passed a law starting the war called the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution based on something that never happened that was a CIA lie. So the CIA is more powerful than our elected representatives. Yeah. Then we have Bobby Kennedy Jr. You're like you said, my opinion is the expert's opinion. That you know, and so if I have Bobby Kennedy Jr., who has more access to the JFK files than Oliver Stone does, say with 100 percent certainty that his decades-long researched opinion is that the CIA murdered his uncle, President John Kennedy, because he was going to shut down the CIA, then yes. I trust his opinion. So what we have here is a government that admittedly, even Wikipedia says the Gulf of Tonkin. Oh, I mean, they, they, they've just come out and admitted it at this now, point. We've got declassified okay. documents. There's no question that's true. Yeah. And, and, and okay. actually, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll just add on the and JFK thing. I mean, that's, that's another one as well. So, I mean, again, I don't know for sure on that one. But that one, I'm like 90% certain that um, if, if, if it wasn't a direct CIA, uh, CIA op, they facilitated it in ways or didn't get out, uh, they got out of people's way or whatever it was. But there was definitely some sort of involvement on that one. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. And as you know, documents yeah. have been declassified. And this is probably why Kennedy wanted to shut down the CIA. Uh, they had documents that the you know, CIA, the Pentagon, they suggested in order to get support for attacking Cuba, that they stage attacks on Americans and kill Americans and blame it on Cuba to yes, initiate that, that, a war yes, with Cuba. Yes. Kennedy. Yeah. And what's the name of that oh, one? You I, know I've, the name I've of that one. What's no, the name was, of that um, one called? Yes. I forgot it too. It's not Mockingbird or I forget paper. It, it <laughs> might so be paper. Names here. I forgot but, the name. But yes, of it, the, the, but joint, the joint chiefs of uh, no, yeah, the joint chiefs of staff went to the over, president but, and said that but, we should but, we should launch terrorist attacks and then blame it on Cuba. And I think it was JFK who said, "No, I'm not. I'm not doing that." But that again is on record. Yeah, well, more, he, he should have done more than that. I guess that's what yeah. shutting down the CIA was supposed to be. He should have arrested those people yep. for attempted murder. Planning to kill innocent people is a crime. It's called attempted murder. He should have had anybody who voted for that raise their hand, thrown in jail. And uh, apparently most of those yep. people were the CIA. So the CIA is willing to kill Americans. They killed their own president. They're willing to start a war that led to the unnecessary deaths of 58,220 of their own people. So I don't think they're going to have a problem faking a video image yes. that they claim is on the moon. And that's what we have to understand. And the psychological part of this is that, you know, whoever killed JFK, he's still dead. Yeah. It's still a tragedy. It's just a matter of changing the hat yeah. on who did it and why. Or 9-11. We don't have to go there. But let's say maybe something else there, happened. There are certainly questions over that it's one as well. It's still a tragedy. Those people are still dead. Yeah. It's just changing who did it and why. The moon landing fraud is different. It's a positive lie. It gave people mm. pride. And it's if you, you know, are an intellectual and maybe worship science more than you should, then it's like the Messiah of science. It's the God of science. Well, but I, I want it to be I very much moon. want it to be true. And if it is true, it is basically the crowning achievement of the Anglo people. Um, it, it, it shows what a remarkable thing that our nations can do. So I desperately want it to be true. But. As you've sort of so expertly laid out there, and I think Tim Paul captured this best, at this point, the federal government has negative credibility. Whenever they say something, if they're saying it, you should you should automatically doubt it. And, and that was got, what got me first looking at it, is that um, as much as I want it to be true, and I do want it to be true, um, that organization has been involved in so many things. It's not unthinkable that you should start asking questions about a positive version of something they've done. Yeah, here's a quote from Carl Sagan around the time of Apollo. It's my belief he knew of the fraud, but didn't say so publicly for academic reasons and political reasons. So he said this quote around that time. One of the saddest lessons of history is this. If we've been bamboozled long enough, we tend to reject any evidence of the bamboozle. 
were no longer interested in finding out the truth. The bamboozle has captured us. It's simply too painful to acknowledge, even to ourselves, that we've yep. been taken. Once you give a charlatan power over you, you almost never give it back. And then I'll follow up the, kind of on the same line by Mark Twain, who says it's easier to fool people than to convince them they have been fooled. And what Carl Sagan is talking about is academic people and his peers that will not admit when they're wrong. I've talked to a college professor teaching aerospace at one of the most prestigious universities in America. I showed him all this incontrovertible proof, which you can see for free at sabrell.com, why sadly they really did fake the moon landing. And he said, there's nothing I could show him that would make him recant the yeah. glorious moon landings. And then I said, well, what if you saw Buzz Aldrin on national TV tearfully confessing that he did fake the moon landing and begging the public's forgiveness. The college professor said that he would still think he well, walked uh, yeah. on the moon anyway. To watch the full video, please become a premium member at lotuseaters.com.